to Crime in Court. My name is Heather and this is a Sarah Boone update. If you're not familiar with her, um, she is incarcerated right now and um, under allegations and charges for um, the unaliving of her boyfriend who was found that um, after a night of drinking the next day he was found unalive in a suitcase and uh, police found video there's um, video of her on her phone of it where she's you know kind of she's engaging in conversation with him and it sounds pretty malicious and intent and he's asking grasping for air saying he can't breathe and um she does sound inebriated in the um in the phone or in the video and then she's she claims that she went to bed forgot about him or thought that he was going to come out she they were playing hide and seek or whatever that was what she told the police when they first came to her house uh she called the police well first she called her ex-husband and then she called the police and um that was her excuse was that they were playing hide and seek and he went in there and she forgot and she fell asleep because they had been drinking a little bit and then yeah so it doesn't look great for her especially because of the video that was on her phone and the things that she was saying um so that being said she is um there's a lot of interesting things that have been surrounding her once she has been incarcerated because she has had um she either has the worst luck in the world or she may be difficult to get along with <laughs> those are probably the uh either ors there um because well she did some of it is bad luck and that is for sure that she didn't have access to some of her attorneys early on or they had to recuse themselves early on so some of that is bad luck but she's now on her seventh attorney who had just had just came out and said that they want out like they literally just got put on her case and now they want out so let's find out from lauren silver from court tv uh what this is about why the attorney wants out and then we'll read the latest letter from sarah so her latest letter to the judge all right so it feels in what feels like a scene out of the movie groundhog day sarah boone has once again found herself without an attorney and has written a letter to the judge asking for help Boone is charged with second degree unaliving in the ending of her boyfriend, Jorge Torres, who was found unalive after he was zipped up inside of a suitcase. Boone told police that she put him in the luggage as part of a game of hide and seek that went wrong. Winston Hobson, the seventh in a string of attorneys who have represented Boone, filed a motion to withdraw on Thursday citing so last week thursday citing irre irreconcilable differences including but not limited to ethical considerations and irreconcilable differences but not limited to ethical considerations hobson was appointed to represent boone after her sixth attorney frank bankowitz withdrew from her case in august telling the judge that he could not represent a client who called him a, quote, dud and a buffoon. The judge was, not only that, but she put out her prison letters publicly calling him those names. So, I mean, she really, uh, she did not like him. She ripped him a, a new one in her letters to, the, to Judge Wooten. All right, so the judge who will hear Hobson's motion to withdraw is new to the case. Judge Michael Michael Cranick has taken over the case as Judge Wayne from Judge Wayne Wooten. Boone had previously written a number of letters from jail to Judge Wooten bemoaning the length of time that she has been held. She's been in there a few years now. I mean she has been in there a while and it's not going to trial, but she might be part of that. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and her perceived lack of access to her attorneys. So she does, she repeatedly says that her attorney's numbers don't work or she can't get a hold of them. And 
We'll read what her new excuses are now. So I don't know yet. Uh, so while Hobson said in his motion to withdraw that he had met with Boone in person at the jail and video and via video, Boone's first letter to Judge Cranick claims she has not she has only spoken to Hobson on one occasion for a total of three hours and has never received any phone calls. So it seems that their impression of the client attorney relationship is a little different and the frequency in which they see each other appears to be a little bit different. Their perception is different. All right, so Boone made no secret of her disdain for Judge Wooten in her letter, blaming him for the delays in her case along with her attorneys. And I'm going to skip this because we're going to get to it in the letter. In her letter, Boone asks to be included in all future hearings. Either way, I'm still here waiting patiently and very excited to get this highly anticipated show on the road. Thank you in advance, Judge Krenick. Welcome. All right. The next hearing in, I don't even know what to say about that. All right. So the next hearing in Boone's case is scheduled for May 3rd, which is ahead of the anticipated May 13th trial. Do you think she's going to have a trial now on May 13th? I don't. The judge will likely schedule a hearing sooner to address this motion. So that is what's going on with that attorney at least from his perspective. And now let's see what, um, what Sarah Boone says. So this letter she sent to the new judge, Judge Cranick, January 19th. Honorable Judge Cranick. Finally, a new judge. It's strange how the Lord works as I was in the process of trying to disqualify Wooten after being my judge for four years and me still incarcerated with nothing to show other than seven different attorneys, not by choice, news clips of me walking in and out of the courtroom and everything relative to my care permitted to be slathered on the global internet and in which I have not seen myself. Okay. <laughs> I felt he was the ticket holder to my overly hyped, illicitly distributed, misconstrued criminal case and great reason I am still here again, ongoing four years and seven attorneys later, not by choice. See my letter dated 6-29-23 on clerk's website. So it's on the website. Just directing him where to go. Sorry, my boyfriend just got home so all the dogs gotta go run down the stairs <laughs> and hardwood floors and they're so noisy all right so while still waiting to properly elucidate the court public and world and after whatever the dysfunction was in the attendance part of my most recent ptc status hearing which i am trying to ensure my automatic attendance frustratingly please see my draft motion included i am still trying to have my attorney submit on my behalf so she's been trying to submit paperwork to the court clerk or to the court um multiple times saying like hey i've been having hearings and my my attorney's not taking me to court i want to be in attendance for every single hearing and why is this not happening and she has a right to be at every hearing so she has valid points in some cases some cases i'm not saying all but she ha she does have some valid points like that one attorney that it seemed um i don't know they just many of them seem to really butt heads but uh we'll just we'll move on from here all right so i wanted to bring to your Judici to your ju judicial attention the following information so you and the world are aware it is not I who am ever delaying trial as Wooten is inappropriately accused me of doing in a past hearing especially now you have mandated a trial date to be had in May with no further continuances leaving less than four months to put together and complete what should and could have been done already what happened in all the four years prior 
please see all my correspondence online. So all of our letters are online, Judge. Please go back and look. <laughs> In case you don't know what's going on, please read up on my case, is what she's saying. But, but just in case you don't, here's a summary. <laughs> to date, Winston E. Hobson has been my court-appointed attorney for 133 days and counting. To date, Mr. Hobson has only met with me one time for a total of three hours. Uh, and, that, and then she provides the date of when she met with him. To date, no phone calls have been received by Mr. Hobson as his phone does not work properly for further immediate uh, much needed communication to be made between client and attorney. The date I have mailed five letters, to, oh, to date I have mailed five letters to Mr. Hobson trying to communicate my urgent need to speak with him. Sorry, it takes a minute for these pages to flip. Come on. Or did that, was that, it did flip, okay. Sorry. Um, to date, I sent one letter to the investigator in my case to con this is her reading's hard to write. Sorry. Her writing is hard to read. If I could speak, that would be better. I'm going to move me over a little. So you can see. Okay. So to date, I feel I am not being included or heard or cared about in my case again from the continued miscommunication again with Mr. Hobson and time consuming. Um, oh, did I skip? No. Uh, did I? Sorry, I lost my spot. And time consuming undiscussed entries are being made on my behalf continuance I did not know about, the waiver of appearance I did not know about, along with other documents, and I am never seen, I am never seen copies of anything filed, so I know I keep trying to tell him about, with no response, furthering the already massive dysfunction in my four-year case. I was hoping in the PTC status hearing on Tuesday, 1 16 24, I could at least play catch up in the courtroom for five minutes, so many of my attorneys have done prior, including Mr. Hobson, in the one court date I've had for the continuance of a continuance <laughs> to express and emphasize the need for him to communicate and schedule a second, very overdue meeting. I still have not even heard from Mr. Hobson about our Miss PTC status hearing. What's the status? To date, I out, oh, one out of 133 days and counting attorney and his client have met. To date, and she did this in other letters too, where she's like, to date, this many and this many days, and she likes numbers. She likes to break it down in numbers. To date, three out of now 3,192 hours, attorney and client have discussed partial general case information. To date, I still have not seen my discovery. Your Honor, when is the next status hearing, please, especially since I, we, were not at the last PTC status hearing, and especially since I am trying to communicate with my attorney in more in one way to fully maximize and utilize the minute amount of time allotted before trial. My fair, appropriate, lawful trial? Question mark. I still am wondering why, though, I've had to wait for four years for something to finally happen on my case, on or in my case. Ask Judge Wooten, I wonder also, was I the oldest case on his docket? Either way, I'm still here waiting patiently and very excited to get this highly anticipated show on the road. I, wait, I await your overdue and very needed judicial direction, supervision, and intervention. Thank you in advance, Judge Cranick. Welcome. Sincerely, Sarah Boone. Is there more to the letter? 
Yeah, there's more. Okay, so motion to be included and allowed admittance to all defendants pre-trial. Look at how she, I mean, she does research and like, <laughs> I don't know. She she uses her time valuably, valuably to defend herself, I think, at least in some regards to, you know, get these motions out there or not motions. Um, well, this is a motion. To be included and allowed admittance to all defendants' pre-trial conferences and hearings. She has to put it out there because she doesn't have an attorney advocating for her in this way. So she has to do her own motions here. So comes now defendant Sarah Boone by and through her under undersigned attorney, Winston E. Hobson, respectfully requests permittance to attend all my pre-trial conferences and hearings ongoing until the conclusion of my criminal case. And since she's doing it on her own behalf, she really, she's the undersigned, not her attorney. So that's funny that she put that, but that's wrong. Um, <laughs> she's the undersigned because she's, she's the one writing it. All right. So per whatever rule, the following is stated that to lawfully allow my inclusion, participation, and requested admittance. One, the trial court may hold one or more pretrial conferences to consider such matters as will promote a fair and expeditious trial. The defendant uh, must be present at any pretrial conference unless the defendant's presence is waived in writing or on the record by the defendant or by the defendant's counsel with the defendant's consent. In support, the defendant alleges as follows. These pretrial conferences are for my personal individual criminal case. If, pro professionally you if professional YouTubers, news channels, t court TV, etc. are given permission and allowed entry to the courtroom for viewing and the judge also is allowing the conferences to be streamed live with all the court minutes uploaded to the internet and world, I, the defendant, should be included foremost. And I absolutely agree with her there. She should be at her own hearings. And and her, she obviously has a desire to know what is going on in her case. And whether good or bad to that attorney wanting her involved or not, you need to involve her. She's your client. You need to let her know what's going on. You need to communicate everything. She needs to have a good understanding of the criminal or the proceedings that are happening. And it doesn't seem like there's an advocate for her so far out of these seven attorneys, not one. All right, so number two, I may not have regular consistent updates or communication with my court appointed, appointed attorney and my, by attending all my PTCs and hearings, I will know current status, important dates, casework being completed, changes in parties, time frames, exceptions, all pertinent information. I, the defendant, have a right to know, want, and need to regarding my case. All information is important, relative, and necessary to me. I don't disagree with her. I mean, these are good, good points she's making. I am not consistently included in the certificates of service and sent copies of any documents being filed in court regarding my case or requested numerous times by the defendant in writing and verbally in the courtroom, neither by the judge, the court, or my attorneys. By attending my pre-trial conferences, I will know what documents have been filed, need to be, and will be for and in my case. Okay. Another way I can know what is going on in my case and being worked on. True. Being in there and seeing the documents will help her stay informed. And she obviously wants to be informed of what's going on in her case. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think most people should be informed of the law. And that's why I'm so interested in this topic. because, Or just true crime in general and our rights. And knowing, you know, what your rights are in these cases. So should someone who hasn't been found guilty yet be sitting in jail for four years waiting for her trial and having seven attorneys and judges ignoring her 
her letters, I mean, regardless of what you think of her and what she's asking, she still deserves to be heard and have her attorneys representing her and being a zealous advocate for her. And from what it appears, I don't think any of them have so far, but I don't know. I don't know their side of the story. This is is just all coming from Sarah right now. So incomplete overall support. It is my right by law as an individual defendant and inmate to be included in any and all developments made in my case. It also is my right to finally achieve success in any and every aspect possible in my case by attending and being included in my pretrial conferences and hearings and su said success can and will be accomplished fairly, faster, properly. Success. Of what? Being exonerated? Is that what she wants? Wherefore, the defendant, Sarah Boone, respectfully asks the Honorable Court to grant my motion to be included going forward to all defendants' pretrial conferences and hearings. Uh, <laughs> she says, Certificate of Service, I certify that an original of this document has been filed via U.S. mail with the clerk of court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit and that a copy of this document will be filed in the Florida ePortal of State Attorney and all attorneys or other parties on court record on this 19th day of January 2024. Sarah Boone and all her info. So there you have it. Sarah wants to be included in all of her hearings and I don't I don't begrudge her that, you know, I really think that, you know, if it was me, I would want to be at all my hearings too. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I definitely think, you know, it's, it's very easy for them to get a transfer from the jail to uh, the court. Sometimes they're even in the same buildings. I don't know what it is in this case, but it, it's done all the time for pretrial conferences and things like that before people are convicted. So it's not an issue, it, like it shouldn't be an issue to them to transfer her. And to bring her there and make sure that she's aware of all of her proceedings, you know. I mean, if she was sitting at home and she had court documents coming to her home, they'd be coming. You know, all these hearings and everything would be coming to her house. So I, why she's not getting them in prison, they know where she's at. So I don't know. But is it true? Who knows? Maybe she is getting things and she's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why she's on her seventh attorney going on her eighth. What do you guys think? A lot of people are saying that she should just go pro se and represent herself, which I don't find a good idea. Um, but it, it's appearing more and more that way that it might happen. So I don't know anyone out there, any legal people out there that want to um, represent her. Would anybody volunteer to represent her? It's a good question. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you're an attorney, if you were an attorney, would you want to represent her? Or would you want to be representing the state in this case? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me. Bye.